Hi, welcome back to our channel. I am going to talk a little bit about what I do for work and what my experience has been or had been when looking for a job. The reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because I think it's helpful to find out, okay, for the people that have gone, how are they doing? Where did you start, Christina? I know you went to school and now we know where you are sort of right now, but what happened in between all of that in terms of working? Because that is the biggest question or the biggest thing on people's mind when it comes to coming to Canada. Will I be able to get the kind of job that I want or will I be able to get a job in general? And I'm going to tell you that everybody's experience is different, all right? And because of that, you can check out other videos. You can check out Tom's video. You can check out Nicholas's video and you can check out videos to come in the future for what it was like for people when it came to the job search. So here is my experience when it came to finding a job and what do I do now professionally? Hi, I'm Christina and I am a project manager slash operations manager. Now, I studied architecture in school. I went to the Caribbean School of Architecture at the University of Technology, graduated, came to Canada, and did a postgraduate certificate in project management. Now, I live in a world where I am able to marry both those things, sort of where I'm dealing with drawings and dealing with people who are doing drawings and dealing with the project management aspect of that world. Now, when I first started with my company, I started out as a drafter, right? Just like how in architecture school, I learned how to draw on a computer. I started out at that company drawing, okay? Was that what I was looking for? I was looking for a job that fell on the NOC code that was going to enable me to get permanent residency. My eyes were on the price. I had long-term thinking. And I was like, I need to get what I need to get. And if this gets me there, let's do it. So my experience with the job search is that I didn't feel very hopeful in staying in Ontario or Toronto in the greater Toronto area because it is known that Toronto is overpopulated to some extent. There are people in Toronto that don't have jobs that are Torontonians, that are Canadians, right? So to say now that, oh, there's going to be an abundance of jobs here, tuts for all these immigrants because there's like work, is not really a true statement. So I coming out of school or coming coming to the home stretch of finishing school I was like I'm moving to British Columbia straight up I didn't even look for jobs in Toronto I looked for jobs in Vancouver in British Columbia somewhere and also in Alberta I had contacted I had applied for several jobs there and I had heard back from maybe a few and I actually had an interior designer interview lined up for when I land hypothetically in Vancouver because I was serious. Now, my family didn't really like that idea because it's one thing to come to Toronto and I mean, I have like one aunt and a cousin here at the time. That's all I knew. It's another thing to go to another province where you don't know anybody and nobody is nearby to come to your rescue in case you are a damsel in distress. I was less concerned about that because my eyes was on the prize and I was going for a goal and nothing was going to stand in my way. All else fails to have some people in California just down the road from Vancouver, sort of. So then I, you know, I had my resume up on indeed.com. Indeed.com is a pretty good site if you're looking for jobs. I was applying through Indeed, I was applying through Monster, I was applying through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very important in foreign. Now I know in third world countries, it's probably just now picking up in terms of the importance of having a LinkedIn profile, an active LinkedIn profile. But here, I think it's way more beneficial to have an active LinkedIn profile, to have an active professional presence on the internet somewhere. 
or to be able to apply to jobs through. So LinkedIn is a viable place to apply for jobs through. So I applied through to jobs through those different things and you know, I was getting back, but a Toronto employer contacted me because employers can also find your resumes. Once your resume is uploaded to Indeed or even in LinkedIn, you can be contacted by a recruiter or by the company itself. So an interior design or interior architecture, I guess, company had contacted me because they found my resume on, on Indeed. I was like, huh, well, I wasn't trying to stay in Toronto, but if you're gonna, you know, give me an interview, then sure. So I went to that interview. Now this place was, maybe two and a half hours away from where I lived. Everywhere was far from where I lived at the time. Just everywhere was just far, okay? And I was okay with that because I'm just like, now I'm trying to work. I have the opportunity to move if I need to move or do whatever I need to do to be where my job is. So I took my bus, two hour bus to that city where the interview was had an interview it was an okay interview and then they said they would get back to me of course in the interview it came up well you live two and a half hours away and we are two and a half hours away from where you live um are you sure this is gonna work out i'm like yeah i'm i'm i will i will move if i get the job i will move closer to the job Duh. so and it's like okay fine we'll get back to you blah 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 so i left went home I'm like, hmm, maybe this is something. And then I had a friend working at a company that did project management. And it was more of an engineering firm than it is related to architecture. But I was like, okay, you know, I could I could do that. And I mean, since everybody's scared about me going to a different province where I don't know anybody, I'll just see what comes of it. I submitted my resume to my friend and he submitted a resume to the company for me. Meanwhile, I'm following up with the place that I've done my interview with to see if they're going to hire me. And they said that, well, there are some other candidates that they are looking into that are more local. So from you hear that, you know, so them don't rule it out already. Kind of said, these people are just as good and them live close. It's less complications. Sorry guys, I'm going off in Jamaica. <laughs> so when you hear an employer saying you know there's some other applicants that are in the area locally that's just them telling you no politely but not really it's like an excuse to not have to tell you no so they just never got back to me after my last follow-up so i'm like okay fine and my friend submitted my resume to his company and i was called in for an interview I'm like great yes meanwhile for the last month of school I worked at Starbucks and at Metro. My last month of school, I had one course, just one. And because it's just one and you know, you can still work 20 hours in school. You can only work for up to 20 hours, maximum 20 hours a week when you're in school based on your work permit. I was able to work at Metro and Starbucks for those 20 hours of the week. And I don't think I ever made 20 hours because I was still like in training or whatever. So. I say that to mean be willing to do what you need to do to get what you need to get done done no I was young still am so I had more time on my hands in terms of I'm not old <laughs> I don't know how to say it so it's not offensive but you know what I mean you know what I mean like I'm coming out of school I'm still like in my early stages of life where I can make mistakes and work odd jobs and do different things and, and, and burn some time. So it's okay if you take what you need to take at the time to make money or to do what you need to do, right? But don't let that decision be a deterrent or be a distraction from look keeping your eyes on the prize or be a distraction from the prize because my prize was to get a skilled job that would qualify under the express entry program so i worked at starbucks and metro for two weeks got an interview at this place and they hired me on the spot I'm like great sorry starbucks and metro i gotta go i'm so sorry and i moved three hours away from where i used to live three hours by bus hour and 20 minutes by highway 
I didn't drive, so I wasn't gonna try to accommodate. It wasn't gonna happen. So I started there as a drafter. Soon after, very soon after, they made me a project coordinator, which was just, I think, a lot of perfect timing and God. And um, I guess because I have project management training, they were doing some internal restructuring and they made me a project coordinator after um, maybe two months or so of being a drafter, which I was like, great, because I was getting bored. Stiff. I can't be a drafter for long. Nope. So being a project man, being a project coordinator was very exciting because I'm working alongside a project manager and learning from him directly. Then probably a year after I became a supervisor for the drafters. So I was once a drafter and now I'm supervising the drafters. And then I, maybe a year after, I became a project manager slash operations manager. And I say that because I am both. I manage some projects and I also manage the operations of my department. So that is what I do. That is where I'm at. My company is more of an engineering firm. I don't work in an architectural firm or in the architectural world directly. I consult with or communicate with architects and engineers and i take their drawings and we put our stuff on their drawings but i actually like what i do i actually also like that i'm not the one doing the drawings <laughs> so that is where i'm at right now and that is the time it took me to get there i've been here for five years i've been working at the company for almost five years because i got the job right out of school and i'm grateful for it and i share this experience with you to give you an idea of what the potential is based on one person's experience and there's going to be tons of more experiences on here you can check out nicholas's story you can check out tom's story and more stories from people to come i appreciate the time that you're taking to watch this video if you like this video at the end of it please give it a thumbs up and maybe a lot of people didn't think that i have a nine to five job guys i have a nine to five job i have, I have a I have work i have a very important and sometimes very stressful job especially in the summer when the weather is good and construction is booming so my company is an engineering slash construction in the engineering slash construction world construction project construction management that that is my experience as a Canadian immigrant at an unnamed company and that is what I do I appreciate the time you've taken to watch this video if you like this video and you get to the end of it please give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe there's a subscribe button on this side it's not on that side okay it's on this side I keep on mixing up the sides it's on this side vivid side and Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, ask some questions, check out our question and answer Tuesday videos, and make some comments in the comments section below. We love to hear from you. We love to know that you're watching. We love to know that you are a part of this community. I would love to see you in the next video.